Throughout history, bells have played both practical and ceremonial roles. Village bells would ring to mark time and to warn of danger. Church bells would toll to summon worshippers. Bells are traditionally cast of bronze, a metal that's as durable as it is melodic. There'd be neither swing nor ring without a mould. And only a quality mould makes a quality bell. They make the mould using a pattern. This particular bell will have decorative lines on the surface, which will require a separate mould made from this five-piece pattern. After greasing the surface with a release agent, they lower a wooden casing around it. This casing will contain a mix of fine silica sand and epoxy used to make the mould. Workers pack it tightly between the pattern and casing. The epoxy sets in 10 minutes, and they now have a sand mould with which to cast the bell's decorations. They still need a mould to cast the bell itself. They make it with this aluminium pattern. After spraying it inside and out with a releasing agent, they lower the decoration mould they just made right over it. Then on top of that, a steel casing to contain the sand mix. Workers pack the sand mix and wait for it to set. Then they flip the casing and add another section to it to contain even more sand mix. But before the next load of sand, they insert what's called the gate. This aluminium rod shapes the channel through which they'll pour the molten bronze into the mold cavity. Now they go ahead and top up the sand. Next, they form a funnel around the central channel to pour in the molten bronze. They poke the sand mix to make sure it's set, then pull out the gate. They separate the two casings, each of which contains a section of the mold. Then the patterns come out, vacating what is now the mold cavity. They tidy up the mold walls. This powdered graphite solution will act as a barrier, preventing the hot metal from eroding the epoxy that holds the sand mold together. Next, they spray on a second coat of wash. The sand is so fine that the mold would otherwise reproduce the brush strokes on the cast bell. Now they measure the size of the pore hole and custom make a ceramic filter to glue inside. This filter will screen out the slag oxidized particles that form when molten metal meets air. Now workers stack the two mold sections back together and clamp them tightly so that the bronze won't leak out during casting. Melting enough bronze ingots for an average sized bell takes about two hours. To get a smooth enough consistency, the furnace has to heat the metal to 1,200 degrees Celsius. For a quality casting, they must pour the bronze in one continuous flow, no stops and starts. The funneling basin they made in the sand prevents overflowing. The bronze takes about half an hour to solidify and up to 24 hours to cool. Workers remove the sand mold with a jackhammer, being careful not to hit the bell inside. The extracted bell is covered in a residue of burnt epoxy. They remove it with a wire brush. Then they disengage the gate with one well-aimed strike of a sledgehammer. Now they mark the exact center point of the bell. That's where they'll install the hardware from which the bell will hang. They drill a small hole, then gradually drill it larger and larger. They can't bore a big hole in one shot because the friction-induced heat would crack the bell. They tip the bell on its side to hang the clapper, the proper term for the bronze hammer inside. Every bell this factory produces goes through six stages of polishing, starting with a coarse grinding belt and finishing with a fine cloth buffing wheel. Two hours of polishing later, the bell looks as beautiful as it sounds. And that is the tall story. Ding dong.